What is going on you guys, today we are back with a great film, Ragnarok. The movie begins a hundred of years ago with a visual of the Norse people known as Vikings. The clan leader had gathered all his people and takes them to a large lake where the gods are set to live. While he tells his men to prepare, his daughter tells him what they're doing is wrong and begs him to refrain from going through with his plan. Telling her that it was the will of Odin, her father ignores her plea and has his men put a sheep on a small raft and send it out onto a lake. The chief's daughter whispers that her father's greed is gonna get them all killed and a few minutes after the sheep is sent out, something huge comes out of the water, roaring in anger, causing the people to panic and flee. In the present day, an archaeologist by the name of Sigurd is searching for something inside his messy study. After greeting his son and daughter, he goes to the kitchen to get himself some coffee and returning to the living room, he asks his kids why they're overdressed and his young son Brage tells him that his sister Runhild was graduating from high school and that she was going to be singing. Realizing that he had completely forgotten about it, he pretends that he didn't and tries to remember the program was 3 o'clock and saying goodbye to his kids, Sigurd rushes to his work where he gets chastised by his boss for being late, telling him that they were pitching for a million dollars which would allow their research to go on for three more years. Sigurd hurries to the room where he's being awaited to give a presentation and shows them the discoveries that they had made about the Osberg Vikings. After his presentation, the investors seemed underwhelmed with what they had heard and asked him if it was all what their money was wasted on. Disregarding his boss's advice to explain only the facts, Sigurd takes the group to the side and shows them the items that they had found in one of the boats that they discovered. Showing them the relics, he begins to speak about this mythological event Ragnarok which upsets the investors even more, assuming that their money was used to fund nonsensical things. Threatening to withdraw their financial support, the investors immediately depart and later a Sigat supervisor expresses his anger towards Sigat for alienating all their patrons over a venture that only he had faith in. Despite Sigat's attempt to mention that his late wife Marin, who passed away six years ago, also shared their belief in the research, the museum director remains unwilling to lend an ear. After a horrible day at work, Sigat gets into his car only to realize that he's incredibly incredibly late for his kids program. When he arrives, he finds that the event has ended and his kids were sitting around outside waiting for him. When he tries to apologize with the excuse that he had been caught up with work, Runhild angrily goes inside the car without a word to her father. That night, she continues to give her father the cold shoulder and even shuts down the idea of going to their usual cabin. After sending his kids off to bed, Sigurd gets a knock on his door and opens it to find Alan, his co-worker. After telling him that he couldn't get a hold of him through his email, Alan drags in the heavy duffel bag that he'd been carrying. Opening up the bag and revealing a stone, Alan explains that although he hadn't found anything while he had been searching for three years, he had finally gotten lucky. Seeing the stone, Sigurd is stunned and sits down to investigate it further. Using his tools, he cleans up the nooks and crannies on the stone and notices something familiar, a pattern that fits an item that they discovered before. Together, they head over to the museum where he works at and take the triangular object from the locked case. Returning to the house, they use the object to decipher the code on the stone and find out that it's a map along with a set of directions. The following morning, Sigurd tells his family that they're going to Finnmark. At first, Runhild is upset because she was hoping to have a proper vacation, but after her father's constant badgering, she finally agrees to go. Following their flight, Sigurd, accompanied by his children and Alan, arrives in Finnmark. They're warmly welcomed by Elizabeth, Alan's assistant, and after exchanging pleasantries, Elizabeth presents a map and asks about Sigurd's intended destination. Sigurd proceeds to explain that the discovered ruins likely contain a treasure map, revealing the amassed wealth from their exploits across Europe. Leave, the guide leading the group, emerges out of the car and asks about their destination choice. Once he requests upfront payment, he gathers everyone into a car and begins on their journey, and following their car ride, they procure a boat and navigate through the river, marveling at the breathtaking scenery that surrounds them. After the boat ride, the group starts hiking in the direction that they assumed the Vikings had gone, and Ranhild was still unhappy and continues to complain about the lack of phone signal in the area. And after a long 
long walk, the group arrives at a fence that Leif explains was the older border between Norway and the Soviet Union, but that now was just a no man's land. Ranhild continues to be attacked by the endless mosquitoes in the area, which makes Elizabeth feel sorry for her and gives her a spray to ward them off. While she was showing her how to put it on herself, Elizabeth asks about their mother, who Ranhild explains had died due to cancer. A long time later, they finally arrive at the lake, which the map had expressed as Odin's eye, and after constructing a makeshift boat, the group uses it to cross the lake to where a small island was located. After searching around for a while, all the group could find with their metal detectors were just old bullets from the old war. A bored Runhild goes out on her own to look around the area and files a small rusted bunker left behind by soldiers. As she was checking the place, she started by a leave, who appears out of nowhere. Finding a passport, Runhild wonders what had happened to the people. Leif tells her that judging by that wire, they probably died crossing the ice and got stuck. At the campsite, Sigurd and Elizabeth sit next to each other by the fire, and after seeing the strained relationship with his daughter, Elizabeth speaks to him about his dead wife and how it must have been hard to let go. Suddenly, Sigurd hears his son call him and hurries to where the voice is coming from. When he arrives, Brage tells him that he's discovered a cave, and going inside, they find a large hole that leads deep inside the cave, further than their eyes can see. After informing the others, the group sets up the ropes that would help them descend and start going down one by one. Once they've all made it safely on the ground, they start looking around and are shocked to find a Viking's helmet, reaffirming their expedition. While they were celebrating their findings, laughing and hugging each other, Brage finds a strange looking egg-like thing in the water and places it inside his bag. As they continue to find more items, Sigurd mentions that it would be more difficult to transport everything to the museum, and interrupting him, Leif asks him why he was giving away his findings, to which Sigurd explains that it wasn't really their property and that it belonged to a public place where everyone could see it. And he continues to tell him that they adhere to the Cultural Heritage Act. Angry, Leif pulls out a rifle and points it at the group and tells them that their discovery was not gonna go to any museum. He then tells them to put everything away neatly so he can take it, and Sigurd explains that the items would not be able to take the stress off the transportation, but Leif was unwilling to listen. After he gets himself out, Leif drags the artifacts up while Elizabeth begs him not to leave them in there or to at least send someone to get them out, and looking smug, he sarcastically tells them that he will definitely do that and he drops the rope so they won't be able to get out. Leif puts all the items that he stole onto a small raft and begins paddling back to the mainland, and halfway to his destination, he senses movement underwater and tries to see what it was. Suddenly, something unseen emerges out of the water and swallows Leif and his raft. Down in the cave, Elizabeth had taken it upon herself to climb to the top with the rope tucked in her back pocket. Once she reaches the top, she sets a line for them and everyone gets out. Once they make it to the surface, they see that Leif has left with their raft and they decide to spend the night there and build another one the following day. Sitting by their campsite, Sigurd tells Alan that he thinks that there's more to discover and suggests that they go back down into the caves. And while everybody was asleep, Alan and Sigurd returned to the caves in hopes of finding something, and while they were looking around, they're shocked to find hundreds of scattered bones that they assume belonged to the Vikings. Taking out his journal and showing Alan a drawing of an animal, he explains his theory that the drawings on the Vikings' ships might have been made to depict a real animal. While they're conversing, a sudden loud roar reverberates through the cave, forcing the two men to hide. As they're squatting behind a rock, Sigurd takes a peek and sees what looks like a giant serpent slithering in the water. Back on the surface, Braga is awakened by the sound of something moving around under the bunk bed that they found in the rusty bunker. When he looks, he finds that the egg that he had bought with him is open and notices something slithering around. Scared, he and his sister start to scream until Elizabeth comes to the rescue by quickly putting the animal in a box. While the small animal thrashes around and screams inside the box, its 
mother in the lake hears it and drags the wire connected to the bunker and drags it into the water. Shook by the sudden force of the pull, the bunker doors accidentally shut, its lock jamming into place. Hearing their screams, Sigurd and Alan hurry toward them and manage to get them out just in time before the monster drags the whole bunker underwater. Deciding that they need to get out of there immediately, the group starts to look for items that they can use to get away from the island. While searching, Alan finds the box the baby serpent is kept in and hides it in his bag in hopes of bringing it back alive and showing it off. Deciding that they can't use a raft, they prepare a zipline to propel them from the island to the mainland. After Alan and two of his kids have crossed over, Sigurd goes next but the tool holding him to the rope gets jammed. Hoping to help him, Elizabeth goes out to him but a sudden attack by a giant serpent startles them and causes them to fall in the water. Elizabeth and Sigurd rush to shore as the giant serpent follows them, ready for an attack. Before it could catch them, Alan fires a gun and hits the beast in the eye, giving the two enough time to escape. Once they get on the land, the group thinks that they're safe, but realizes that the beast isn't constrained by water and sees it approach them and trees falling all around it. Running, they stumble on another bunker, this one made of cement, and hide inside until the beast leaves. Inside, they see a ventilation pipe and follow it, which leads them straight to an opening. After Alan goes out first, Sigurd discovers the animal that he'd been hiding in the bag. And although Sigurd warns his friend that it's a bad idea to take the animal, Alan was adamant about his decision. Before Sigurd could pass him the bag, the beast approaches and takes him away. The beast then crashes down the hole in pursuit of the children, and realizing what it wanted, Sigurd approaches it and returns its child unharmed. The beast then calms down and leaves them alone, and once they were safe, the family embraces each other knowing that they've escaped the dangerous ordeal. Emerging from the treacherous island, the group triumphantly makes their way back to civilization, accomplishing a feat that had been a dream of countless others. And the movie comes to a close as we see Sigurd with his children standing next to Elizabeth, watching the beautiful expanse of Finnmark and the island that they just escaped from.